back with our third session. <laughs> I pray this time everything goes well. So as we start, let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this time you have given us. Oh God, come lead us, guide us, teach us Holy Spirit. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And amen. We are back with our third session. And we are going to be looking at one of my favorite topics. I'm talking about it's one of my best. Anything that talks about reaching out is one of those topics that I really, really, really love. So today we are looking at topic 380 and we will be looking at the kingdom of God in the marketplace. And you and I are the ambassadors of God and whether we are at work, at home, in our families, in our marriages, we have to understand that we are his ambassadors. Now today, we are going to be looking at this kingdom and in the marketplace. Now, the marketplace is the biggest field for evangelism and winning souls. As we all know, this is one of those places where you go to work and this is where most people spend a lot of their time. Most people spend a lot of their time at work and even you right now who is watching me, if you are going to work, you will find yourself spending more time actually than the time you spend home with your family. Now, it is where most people spend most of their time. In the Gospels, Jesus spent most his time in this place called the marketplace. Most of the parables Jesus spoke relate to the marketplace. And you and I have to understand that the marketplace must not be separated with any other, you know. And if it is a place that we actually spend a lot of our time, we have to get to a place where we understand that if God allowed us, and as we shall see in scripture, that it is so evident that God encourages work and the marketplace, as we have seen, Jesus spends a lot of time there, meaning that it's not uh, a place of toil, of hardship, you know, <laughs> a place whereby you say, you know what, let me go do that and then let me come back. It should be part of your daily routine and it should be part of you making sure that you display yourself as an ambassador. So it is so important to understand that what we portray everywhere we go is going to either lead people to understand and know our God and love our God or not. So, so many times Christians go to work and they hide. They hide who they are. And number two, they don't want to display the fruits of the Holy Spirit at the workplace. Now, let me tell you something that is shocking. Even you who is watching me, I believe you have heard this. Many times a non-believer finds someone who is their workmate in, let us say, church. And then they say, really, that person is a Christian? I didn't know that. You know, I had an incident of where someone who I brought into church, a place of fellowship, as you can call it, found someone there who is their colleague serving i'm talking about serving <laughs> it's not like they were just someone seated in the pews they were serving they were so active in the church they are one of the people in the leadership and this person was so surprised and you know i was also asking why do you think they are not a christian and she just kept quiet because this person did not see this specific person who is serving a church as someone who is actually reaching out and showing Christ. Maybe because of work, they don't want to, you know, mix it up. But I want to say to you as a child of God, at your workplace, you are an ambassador. You are there as an ambassador. Anywhere you are an ambassador. Shopping, you are an ambassador. What, what can we say? On the road, you are an ambassador driving your car with the crazy taxi drivers hooting and doing all funny things. You are still an ambassador. Everywhere you go, you are an ambassador for Christ. But right now, we are going to be looking at this place called the marketplace. Now, how does God perceive the marketplace? 
This is a place where God's people are ambassadors. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Although God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Now, there's so many things that we have to see here. God calls us to be ambassadors at the workplace. A couple of years ago, I think that was 20, 2010, and for four to three years, I think it was five years, we started something that I believe should be shared because I believe this can maybe stir your heart to, to also be that person who can go out there to the marketplace and take the gospel. So this is what we realized. One of the members of our church at the time was coming once in a while, once in a while at church. And you know what? I reached out to her and we, we found out that this person is not coming to church because they are working in retail and most of the Sundays they are actually, most of the Sundays they are on duty, they can't come to church. And this person was able to bring out something of so many people who can't actually go to, to church or gather. And we sat there and we realized, you know what, this is something that could be so amazing. Now, if these people can't come to church, let us take church to them. Okay, so listen to this unconventional way in which we decided to go reach out. And Pastor Leslie would, uh, you know, testify about this because he was one of the people who founded this. We opened up what they call building a city. And this is what we are doing. We walk into your pep, your Woolworth, and I'm talking about your flat out retail. We walk into Ackermann's. We even went further to go into the police stations because they are changing shifts and we entered shopping malls and all we were three of us and all we go in there to do is to speak to the managers and tell the managers that we would like to come in and be given a few minutes to motivate your staff. Now the managers were very cautious and very, you know, holding back. What is it that you want to speak to our staff? You know, and we just quickly plainly told them we want to encourage them. We know that most of them don't can't make it to church and most of them, their spirits are so down. They need to be encouraged. So we brought it on and we blended and, you know, <laughs> told these managers we want to come in for those who would like to be encouraged through prayer or through a word of encouragement or those who are looking for spiritual help to be encouraged. We would like to come in for free and encourage those group of people who would love that. And we told the managers it's not compulsory. All we need is five minutes of your time. It was crazy. So I remember this specific manager, if I'm correct, it was Shoe City, something like that, looked at me and just decided, you know what, let me just, let me just test this thing out. And I knew the manager looked at me with the look of they're going to fail. <laughs> they are going to completely fail in five minutes. The manager says to me, tomorrow, can you come? And I'll give you five minutes. And, and she said to me, I'm not going to give you more than five. It's going to be five minutes. And you can present this to my staff and we can see where it goes. So that is what usually managers told us. They would say to us, come present it to my staff in the training time in the morning. Okay. And you know what? I went there and I assure you in five minutes, <laughs> Under five minutes, I could say four minutes and 30 seconds. I had given the word. I had quickly briefed them. And I, I prayed. And at the same time, I also made an altar call. <laughs> I made an altar call in those <laughs> four and four minutes and 30 seconds. I want to assure you when it was done, the staff were saying, please come back. We would like you guys to come back and encourage. I went there with one scripture in under a minute. I had done the scripture. And let me tell you something. We started prayer altars. We, we started this and, and we, we raised up, um, employees who could in the morning when we are not there just start with the word encourage others but let me tell you something so many people gave their lives to christ we entered your spa you cannot believe spa in the break time <laughs> in the break time we are in there for 10 minutes 
And in the marketplace, I want to tell you, there are so many souls in the marketplace. There are so many people depressed, exhausted. There are so many people who cannot come to a modern built church. Sometimes not because they don't have time, but they don't feel encouraged to come there. Now, if the people won't come to church, you and I must be those ambassadors. At your workplace, be that ambassador. You know, maybe at your workplace, it's not the same thing. It might not allow you to pray. But can you be that ambassador who can display the fruits of the Holy Spirit? That someone sees you different. That during the break time, they want to confide in you. And as they confide in you, then you can actually lead them and tell them about this amazing person who loves them. Who wants to heal them. Who wants to set them free of any financial burden. You and I are those ambassadors. And as the church continues, this giant okay, continues to hide. This giant continues to look away. Let me tell you something. The world will keep in darkness. You and I are those ambassadors that bring the light. And if we don't wake up as a giant, which is the church, we are seeing so many people being taken by the enemy to hell. Remember, you are God's ambassador at the workplace. Currently, I am doing a training. I am a trainer. So I am a trainer for an NGO during the day for a couple of hours. I am a trainer for an NGO, which is for the unemployed. Now I want to give you again this very important relatable story. Every morning, okay, I'm, I'm a trainer for the unemployed. We get the unemployed and we do short trainings for them. And our aim is to disciple them. We want discipled people at the workplace. We connect them to employers, but we use the job readiness training that is actually biblical. But it is so powerful in this way. When people come, they come for jobs. They see us everywhere talking about jobs and they come because they want jobs. Now, my purpose and my goal is yes, to get them jobs. But my main goal is to make sure I draw them to God. And I want to tell you something. They walk in there desperate for jobs. I'm currently right now training around 25 of them for 13 days. But I assure you by the end of that training, <laughs> they have already drawn and understood that, wow, this person is actually going to mentor us to become better and get a job. But they eventually, by the end of the training, we do a gospel, kind of I present the gospel the second day of training for biblical worldview. And I want to say to you, we see them change. Someone will walk into my office and will come tired and exhausted and just coming to inquire what we are all about. And boldly, the Holy Spirit says to me, she's not well. And I look at them and I say, are you okay? And they say, no, no, I'm not okay. And you know what? Very simple. I said to them, would you like me to pray for you? And like that, I pray for them. Every single day, I wake up and I say to God, let me represent you. Let me be an answer to anyone that I'm going to walk into. Because I am an ambassador for Christ. You as a believer are an ambassador for him. And it's my prayer that God will give you boldness. I know some of you are looking at me like, really, you can do yes. Yes, God can give you boldness. And you can still be gentle, kind, but you can still be firm and you can still bring the light of God in your workplace. The marketplace is waiting for you and I to actually tell them about our Savior. Let me go on. <laughs> Let me go on. So a place, uh, we can see here the marketplace is a place where God's people let their light shine. I've talked about that. And when we look at that, we can see Matthew chapter 5 verses 16. Let your light so shine before men that you may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, all of us have the light of God in our life and all of us can do things differently. Maybe you don't have to do it exactly like I've said I'm doing it. Maybe you don't have to walk to someone and exactly tell them, you know what, Jesus or something like that. Would you like me to pray for you? But I'm telling you something. If you allow the Holy Spirit that is in you to use you, you are the light and someone can see your character and someone can be drawn to you prior 
privately and in private you can actually be able to witness to this person remember you are the light in those dark places as you walk every day you are taking the light when people see your good works god receives the glory john chapter 15 the bible says when we bear much fruit god is glorified let us be people who are intentional at the workplace to bear much fruit are you walking in love are you walking in kindness are you walking in patience can we see peace and joy around you you know these are things that are key and these things speak louder than even the words they speak louder than Jesus loves you. They speak louder than a prayer. You cannot go to someone to pray for them when they look at you. There's no compassion. There's no kindness. There's no love. They don't see joy. They don't see peace. They see you depressed just like them. And why would they want to come to you? Is there long suffering? So let us bear fruits because those fruits or the fruit of the spirit, they're not fruits. It's the fruit of the spirit glorifies our father. Okay, a place, the marketplace is also a place where God's people walk out their faith daily where they work practicing kingdom principles. Now, I want to say to us students, okay, of the word, it is not only when you are in church at home somewhere where you must practice the principles of the kingdom of God. The principles of the kingdom of God must be practiced even at the workplace. We understand you are not the, the director or the owner of that company. But even then you can practice integrity. You can practice truth, um, trustworthy honesty. You can still practice the principles of the kingdom of God at the workplace. You find so many times that we as Christians are at work, but we are actually not representing what the word of God says. And the word of God is very clear. The Bible has the best principles that can be so applied when it comes to work ethic, you know, when it comes to professionalism, when it comes to communication, Everything that we can see in the word of God, if you choose to relate them at the workplace, I am telling you something, it is excellence in the word. The word of God gives us such principles of excellence that we can actually bring into the workplace so that we can actually daily do the God's work. We must walk the talk and we must represent the kingdom of God. James chapter 22 verse 25. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, and this one will be blessed in what he does. Now, something that is very shocking that I discovered uh, this a few, I think I should say a few months ago. I didn't know that South Africa is, okay, I knew that South Africa is a Christian nation, but I didn't know that 80%, according to registration, have declared themselves in South Africa as Christians. Meaning we are followers of Jesus Christ and we follow the Bible. But now, if you know South Africa, if I'm correct, is around number four, number five, or number six on the list of the highest crime rate in the world. We have 80% of Christians. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this with a caution, though. Is everyone who says is a Christian, are they Christian? You know? But according to the record, it's 80% Christians. And we have such corruption, high extreme levels of corruption. I am telling you right now, a Christian who was in church yesterday, you find them at the workplace asking for a bribe. 
and being corrupt. And we have to understand that if we believe the word of God, even at the workplace, we must be doers of that word. We must separate ourselves from things that we know are contrary to the word of God. Yes, it is not easy. It is not easy at all. But in the end, you are a doer of the word of God. You are an ambassador of God. And you cannot be a hypocrite as a child of God. This we have found. And that is why I believe one of the things that are so failing is the system. Now the system is failing not because the system is failing. But because the people who are in charge of this system are saying we are Christians but are not really doers of the word of God. I want to urge you as a child of God. Whatever it costs, stand and be a doer of the word of God. And stand out and say according to the word of God, I am not going to do this. And if we have men and women of God that can stand up at the workplace in that regard, I am telling you something, we are going to see lives transformed and we are going to see such a clear line between those who are of God and those who are not. Now, when we look at this, we can also see the marketplace is a place where God's people demonstrate kingdom power. First Corinthians chapter 22, chapter 2, verse 2 to verse 5. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ, him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And in my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and power. But your faith should not be in wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is so key. We must demonstrate the kingdom power. That is one of the things that brings a difference. Someone is struggling with a headache and you ask them, may I please pray for you? You pray for them and I am telling you something, they are healed immediately. And they are able to understand that this was not done in your own power. Because you know what? You, when they say to you, the headache is gone, and you say, thank you, Jesus. They are able to understand, wow, there is power here. You know, you can see your colleague is struggling, struggling so much financially. And you say, you know what? Let me pray for you. Is it okay if I may pray for you? Your colleague's family is falling apart, and your colleague is telling you about her family or even her marriage. And all you say is, yes, yeah, shame. Things are hard, eh? <laughs> you know, where is the power? You are a child of God. Demonstrate the power. And you know what? Just say to them, may I please pray with you regarding your marriage? May I please pray with you regarding your son? You know, and as you do that, remember, it's you are representing, you are an ambassador, you are representing the kingdom of God. And as you do that by faith, you are leaving God to work in her life. And as you are leaving God to work in her life, that person's life is going to be changed, touched, and will be transformed to be drawn to Jesus Christ. And you might actually save a marriage. You might save a soul, or you might even lead a whole family to Christ by making sure you demonstrate the power. We are not powerless children of God. We have power. God has given us power and Jesus has left us the Holy Spirit. Paul demonstrates it here. He doesn't use words. He says he, he demonstrates it by power. Jesus demonstrated power in the marketplace. He demonstrated power. Let us demonstrate power and you will see how lives will be changed and how people's spirits will be lifted. Okay. So we can see here also the marketplace is where every believer has the opportunity to encounter many different people every single day. Isn't it amazing? You encounter so many people. You know what? I love people, so I get so excited. <laughs> 
I get so excited when I have to just encounter all the personalities of people. And this is a place where you can encounter all the personalities of people. John chapter 4 verse 35. Do not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for harvest, you know, and that is what it is. Now, if you are timid about people and you, you, I don't know, you get anxious or overwhelmed when you see all the different characters of people around you, I want to say to you, ask the Lord, ask the spirit of God to pour in you a love, a love for people. You don't have to be an extrovert. You don't have to be so talkative, but I want to say to you, people can sense and can feel your love. And let us learn to ask God that love, that that love that can come with compassion, kindness, that people can feel that kind of love. Because when you are at the marketplace, at the workplace, there are so many people. So if you are asking yourself, God, how can you use me? Where can you use me? I want to say to you who goes to work every single day, God wants to use you there at the workplace. That is your marketplace that God wants to use how do people perceive the marketplace so this is the first thing how people perceive this marketplace many see it as a place of work the expenditure of physical mental energy to produce sustainancy work again is associated with employment giving it a negative notion sweat tears hardship this is how people see the workplace but let's look at how god perceives the workplace Colossians chapter 3 and verses 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Work was given before sin entered the world and therefore is a part of God's perfect creation. Work is not a curse. As so many people have said, work is a, a curse. Work was given before sin came into the world. Toiling is the result of the curse, but work is not a curse. Work, not, work was not a result of the fall of man. The fall only made work more difficult. That is what I said, toiling. It became difficult. Now, when you read Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 to 19, it says, Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you saying you shall not eat of it cast is the ground for your sake in toil you shall eat it all the days of your life if you are going to work and you feel like you are toiling I just want to advise you <laughs> let me if you can't leave but can you ask the Holy Spirit for grace so that you can look at the workplace not as a place of toiling, but you can look at the workplace as a place in which lives can be changed, in which you can be used by the Lord to change the situation of the workplace around. Maybe it's the toxic environment that you have, maybe a toxic boss that you have around you and you know what, you go every day and you feel like I'm toiling. Now you are the ambassador that has been put in that workplace. Can you tap your faith and believe God to change the atmosphere? Can you start going to work and speaking the word of God in the workplace? Can you walk around and start declaring things, you know, and, and, and turn your lips from speaking negative of that same place that you are praying for? I am telling you something. God wants to use you to actually change the atmosphere of that workplace. God wants to use you to bring such a positive impact in that place. And this is so key. But we have to understand that work is not toiling and it's not a curse. Both, as I'm reading verses 18, both thorns and threshers it shall bring forth for you and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread toil, sorry, bread till you return to the ground. For out of it, were taken for dust you are and to dust you shall return this comes after a curse laziness okay the habitual avoidance of work is condemned in the bible 
Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the delegate shall be made rich. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 25. The desire of the lazy man kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. Now you have to understand God's perspective regarding work. Laziness is spoken against in the word of God. Now why most of the people hate work? is because we know there is this part of laziness. Now, this is seen even when we are sending our children to school in the mornings when they are little. I had <laughs> I had to literally, uh, my son recently, was it last year? He was asking me, do we really have to go to school? I said, yes, it's discipline. <laughs> because I looked for every reason to teach him. He's like, no, I can do this. I can. I said, no, no, you're going to school so that you can become disciplined. Because in future, in your life, you will need discipline, <laughs> you know. And it is one of those things whereby most people don't want to go to work because of laziness, unfortunately. Our work will be fulfilling and a blessing to others and to ourselves too. Exodus chapter 23, verse 10 to 11. It says here, six years you shall sow your land and gather it in its produce. But the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie fellow, that the poor of your people may eat and what you they live. The beasts of the field may eat, in like manner you shall do with your vineyard and your olive grave. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28. Let him who stole still no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give who has need. That is one thing about work. God tells us that work in his gift. Sorry, let me repeat this. God says that work in his gift and that we will be blessed through our work. Work is the gift of the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 12 to verse 13. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives. And also that every man shall eat, drink, enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. So we can see here laboring and working. Okay, they are said here, you shall enjoy the good of your labor, your work. It says here, it is a gift of God to work. Work will be returned to its pre-fall condition according to the word of God. Now. How citizens of the kingdom of God must perceive the place they work at. Let's quickly look at that. Number one, the quality of our work is very important. We must do our work with excellence. Now ask Jesus to help you or to help us and work through us. Without him, we can do nothing. If you are struggling at the workplace, and you might not even be struggling, but let us ask Jesus to work through us, you know, because literally without him, we cannot do anything. John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Christians should exhibit godly character in all aspects of work. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Again, as such, there is no law. Christians should also show your faith by your works, not by words, but by works. James chapter 2, verses 18. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. I will show you my faith with my works. We say we are children of God and we are believers and his ambassadors. Let's show that through the quality of work that we are giving. Work delicately with the right attitude showing excellent productivity. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Jesus. You don't serve man. You serve the Lord Jesus. And that 
God, through Jesus Christ, will give you the reward. The Bible says openly you shall be rewarded. So remember that as a child of God. Love your neighbor. Okay, the next one. God is about people. All people matter. It is not just the Christians who matter. It is not just the people you know who matter. God loves everyone and everyone matters to God. All those that believe in the gospel and work of the cross belong to one kingdom. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Jesus Christ. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Every person you come in contact with, make sure you handle them, treat them with love, compassion, and kindness. You don't know what they are struggling with. You are also struggling with something. But as an ambassador of Christ, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Leviticus chapter 19 verses 18. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people. But you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. For I am the Lord your God. And in that who is my neighbor, my neighbor is anyone who is in need. They might be in need of anything. That is your neighbor. At work, everyone is your neighbor. Seek the good of others. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 24. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. As Christians and ambassadors of Christ, let us not be selfish. Let us make sure we seek the good of others. Otherwise, the world around us says one thing. Be selfish. We as children of God, we are called to love our neighbors. Character matters as a child of God. There will be iniquity and sin, but walk blameless before the Lord in your character. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1. When, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. Let us be blameless when we walk before the Lord in our character. Let us not be hypocrites as children of God. There will be injustice, but you as a child of God pursue justice. Even where there is injustice at the workplace, maybe it's your boss, maybe it's someone in leadership, maybe it's someone higher than you, maybe it's the whole, you know what I mean, management that is injustice. You pursue justice as a child of God. Marcus chapter 6 and verse 8. He has shown you, O man, what is God and what does the Lord require of you but to be, to do just, justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Stand against oppression so all may grow and develop. As a child of God, be someone who stand against oppression. Do not oppress others. If you have been given a, a position or an opportunity to lead a group of people, don't oppress them. Don't oppress anyone. If you are blessed by God to have a company that you are leading, don't be the one who is the oppressor for others. People must not go cry, you know, because you have oppressed them. You must remember as a child of God, do not be the oppressor. But stand and allow people to grow and to develop. Um, I can't even see it. Uh, do not oppress. Let me say uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. Surely oppression destroys a wise man's reason and a bribe debases the heart. Proverbs chapter 22 verses 16. He oppresses the poor to increase his riches and he who gives to the rich will surely come to poverty. In summary, let your light shine everywhere as a child of God. Father, we ask you to give us boldness. Pour your love, your heart in us, mighty Father, as your children of God. Father, let us be, become intentional to be your vessels of light as we go to the workplace, mighty Lord. Let us go, mighty Father, and represent your God for the harvest is ripe, oh God. For Father, we are here as your laborers at the workplace. Father, send us and use us to draw men to yourself, mighty Father. 
We pray and ask in the name of our Lord Jesus. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. God bless you and let us be encouraged to be the light and to draw men unto Jesus. Have a blessed week.